Hey guys, welcome to another preview season video for the upcoming Magic the Gathering set, Guilds of Ravnica. This is for September 17th, 2018. We've got a couple cards to get to, and uh, if we don't want another hour video, we're going to jump right in. Make sure before we do, you get subscribed to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash 72 DPI online. Uh, if you are already subscribed, consider leaving, leaving a comment and liking the video, telling us about what types of uh, guilds you're looking to play at your preview, or excuse me, at your pre-release uh, coming up very, very quickly. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into our cards here. We're going to start with white. Citywide Bust is next. This is a sorcery rare for white, white, one generic. Destroy all creatures with the toughness four or greater. Yeah, that's... Um, that's a good way to uh, get rid of their uh, their best things, right? Um, four toughness or greater. It's a usually it's a that's a lot of things. Um, so uh, it's rare. So you're gonna play it if you get it. So you know, have fun with it. Um, it's gonna probably be a good sideboard card uh, for creature intensive decks like Stomp Green Stompy and things like that, and and constructed, but uh, limited and sealed. Um, uh, it's just uh, it's it's going to be one of those cards that if you're in those colors already, you'll go ahead and play it. Uh, doesn't necessarily pull you into white for sure. Um, <clears throat> next up, we've got Light of the Legion. This is four white, white rare uh, for a five five angel. She has flying mentor, and when she dies, put a plus one plus one counter on each white creature you control. Uh, so pro white, that's. Um, that's something we haven't seen in a while. Um, cards that care about the color of the creature, that's, um, you know, dispersing plus one, plus one counters, you know, especially if you're in a white weenie deck. Uh, this is a great payoff um, for limited um, and sealed. You'll definitely want, this will definitely pull you into those colors. It's a great finisher, five, you know, 5-5 five, five flyer um, for six isn't too bad, but mentor giving your creatures, you know, that extra bump. Um, and then, you know, Depending on what you have as far as, uh, you know, if it's removed or whatever, giving all your creatures plus one, plus one for the rest of the game is, you know, that's that's a force to being reckoned with. You know, like, do I destroy the 5-5 five five that's pumping one creature and then pump all their creatures? Or, you know, it's, there, there's definitely some... Uh, some inner turmoil there for your opponent to have. Uh, Gird of Battles next is a sorcery at uncommon for one white. Put a plus one, plus one counter on up to two target creatures um so two power and toughness across two creatures not too shabby it's at sorcery speed so you can't use it for a combat trick so it's unfortunate but it's still worth uh i think a slot in your 40 card deck for sure um especially if you're in boros um selesnia is not you know would be uh, would be okay um but this is more i'm thinking this is more a boros card um go wide strategy type of thing <clears throat> Moving on, we have Hazad Marshall. I believe that's how it's pronounced. A so one-one for one white, a human soldier at uncommon. When it when when the Hazad Marshall, uh, Marshall and at least two other creatures attack, create a one-one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Um, this is, I mean, this is fine. Um, if you can, you know, obviously, if you can attack with it on turn three. Um, and you've curved out, you know, more power to you for getting that extra creature on the battlefield. Um, chances are by turn, uh, by turn three or turn four, depending on, you know, your hasty creature on turn three or not, um, this might be the target to, for them to attack, to them to defend. Um, if you can give this flying somehow, uh, which, hey, look, there's Rock Charger, um, it's a 1-3 three for 3 mana with flying, and when it attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. So it's a great way to, you know, the Rock Charger can give Azad Marshall uh, a flying ability, and now you can, you know, attack in, and you're still getting your 1-1. One, one, um, as long, you know, obviously they're going to want to take down the Rock Charger because it's giving, it's granting flying. 
Um, but you know the the marshal is still is still a threat to be uh, to be reckoned with for sure. Divine uh, visitations next. This is a this is a really fun card. I'm gonna look forward. There's gonna be some really janky decks built with this thing, but I'm kind of curious what's gonna be done in, in constructed, especially at like the high level, the pro tiers. Um, this is white white three generic for a mythic rare enchantment. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, that many four four white angel creature tokens would with flying and vigilance are created instead. So you get a Sarah Angel for your uh for your what your snake your one one snake, right? Stuff like I mean that's that's phenomenal. That is a really really good card. Um, so definitely looking forward to playing with this card, um, and looking forward to seeing this card being played at the top tier tables. So, uh, let's see here. Next up we have, oh, where did it go? Boop. There we go. We've got Crawl Scavenger. This is four generic, one green for a four, four insect scout. Uh, it's got undergrowth. And let's see here, when it enters the battlefield, you gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. Um, it's all right. I mean, a 4-4 four, four for 5, that's not that bad. I mean, that's a pretty big body. Um, and if you're going to use this as kind of like a late game effect, um, you know, you might be able to, to eke out, you know, 5, 6 points of life. Um, which isn't too bad, right? If you can gain, I think if you can gain six plus life on this thing on a regular basis, um, then you're you're in the positive, right? Um, a four four can take down quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't have trample, doesn't have reach or anything like that, so it doesn't have any like specific keywords that are going to make it that much better. But it is an uncommon, uh, or excuse me, it is a common. So you know, four four finisher probably not. Um, but, you know, get you back in the game, possibly, right? Um, it's nice that it's uh, when it enters the battlefield, so you don't have to wait for it to die for it to uh, actually get the benefit. Um, Crawl Harpooner is next. That's one uh, colorless green for an insect warrior with reach, and it has, when it enters the battlefield, choose target creature you don't control with flying. Uh, let's see, the Harpooner gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you have the Crawl Harpooner fight that creature. Wow, that is like uber confusing. So that is a huge wall of text. So let's break down real quick. So it's an uncommon. It's a 3-2. Uh, basically, when it enters the battlefield, you, ch you have to choose a target creature you don't control. That has flying. So if they don't have any creatures of flying, you you miss out on this entire thing. Um, if they have a flyer, you you pick it. The harpooner gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So if the creature, <clears throat> so let's say you have five creatures in your graveyard and you play this, uh, you're gonna it's gonna be a eight two, and then it's gonna fight a flying creature when it enters the battlefield. Um, so depending. This is a sideboard card for sure. I mean, there's no reason to play this if they don't have flyers. Um, and, you know, flyers meaning multiples. Uh, if they have, you know, one of their rare bombs or their, you know, game ending cards as a flyer, then you're obviously going to side this in or side a couple of these in if you've got them. Um, but, you know, other than that, don't. It's, it's kind of a trap. You know, although two mana for a three two body with reach, that's not too hateful. This is a hard card to evaluate, right? It's very aggressive, right? Three two, it you know, possibly can take things down, possibly not. You know, you might want to play this on turn two when they don't have any flyers. Um <clears throat> Although I don't think I don't think you get any of the other stuff if they don't have the flyer. I don't think it gets plus X plus O until end of turn. Where I don't know. That's a good question. I'm I'm kind of curious how that goes. Like if they don't have any flyers, you, do you get you don't get the rest of it? So that's that's definitely an interesting concept. Um, so it doesn't have the word then, right? So maybe it does. If you find a way to give it haste, maybe you can um, you know get in some you know green stompy aggro. Hatchery Spiders next. It's five generic and two green for a 5 7 spider at the rare level. It's got reach. Also has undergrowth with a huge wall of text. This 
this keyword is terrible. Like there is just so much going on with these keywords. Um, so when you cast this spell, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. You may put a green permanent card with the converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is like a high, uh, what's a generous high, uh, Genesis Hydra from a few sets back. Um, <clears throat> Where uh, X, you know, you're not paying X. Um, you're uh, looking at uh, creatures in your graveyard. So, I mean, it's a lot of words to just say, count your creatures, look at the top X cards, play a creature that has X or, or play a permanent, which is, gr you know, green permanent, restrictive, permanent, not so restrictive. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a huge creature, 5-7 with, with reach, you know, not that bad. Uh, next up, we got a couple of random single cards here. We got Risk Factor. This is an instant rare for one red, two generic. Target opponent may have Risk Factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw three cards. These Punisher cards are, they always are trying to get you to play these cards, right? Browbeat, Vexing Devil, though all those cards are what are considered uh, Punisher cards where you let your opponent decide what they're, what they want to happen. Um, they're really trying to push this though. Like instant speed is the new part, right? So like uh browbeat was five damage for the same amount of mana, the same card draw this, but that was at sorcery speed. This is at instant speed. So you can, you know, in an, is it deck you be, you could be holding back a counter spell. And if they don't have anything worth your counter, you could play this at the end of their turn, possibly dealing them four damage for three mana, which is probably going to be the likely choice. Um, um, unless you play this in a Boros deck and you're not showing Bor Boros, right? Um, that would be a very aggro Boros thing to do. Uh, but nine times out of ten, I'm they're probably going to take the four damage, which three mana for four damage is is not very good conversion wise. But think again, yeah, remember that's three mana that you weren't going to spend this turn because because of the counter spell. Um, so I would play this if you open it. It's not that bad of a card, and if they let you draw the cards, I mean, thanks. <laughs> Especially if you're an Is it deck like that. that you know, I, I don't know what to say. Like they're gonna take the four damage each time. That's just that's just the the short version of it. Uh, next up, we've got Mal uh, Malik uh, Malice uh, Smothering. This is, or excuse me, malicious smothering. There we go. Two blue, blue, instant counter target spell, exile it. You can shuffle up to four target cards from your graveyard into your library. Um, it's interesting. You can, not you may. Um, up to four cards. So, you know, if you've got some cards in there that you want to get back, you know, more power to you. Um, this is just. I don't know. This is a this is a hard one. You know, we talked about exiling be being a, a powerful thing. This is countering a spell. It's four mana. That's a lot of mana to leave up to counter a spell. Um, you've got to have something awesome in your graveyard. So I don't know. I, I think I would skip it for sure. Wand of the of Verbrae is next. It's one uh, colorless artifact, an uncommon. You can tap it to put the top card of your library into your graveyard. You can pay two, tap it, exile the wand, and shuffle up to five target cards from your graveyard into your library. What is up with these like shuffling number of cards into your library? What what is that? Like where does that come from? I mean, obviously with um, with surveil and stuff like that, you've got cards that are going into your graveyard, but. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, so let's see. Let's keep it moving here. Uh, we've got some gold cards here. Justice Strike is one red, one white for an instant uncommon. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Great card. Great removal. Instant You know, removal is always welcome. In inexpensive is also always welcome. And then also the fact that it is, um, you know, played in it's gonna be played limited it's gonna be played sealed two at a giant and it might even crack into um constructed as well 
Thousand Year Storm is another one. This is going to be an interesting card to see jank decks being built. Uh, it's a, a mythic rare. Is it colors? You've got red, you've got blue, you've got four generic for enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery card, or excuse me, sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant or sorcery spell you've cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So this is, you know... Basically count your spells, right? So the first spell you cast goes off as normal. The second spell that you cast, since you've cast since it's your second spell, you get two of those. And then the third spell that you cast, you get three of those. And then so on in that fashion. Um, so, you know, casting lightning bolts and drawing cantrips and things like that, it really kind of goes off. Um, this really in modern and legacy, you know, commander, this gets even better with um uh, like ritual, like dark rituals and things like that, uh, ritual effects. So <clears throat> this is going to be one of those kind of fun shenanigans cards that get played uh, from time to time in like commander decks um, and then casual formats as well. I don't see it being played in um, in sealed, limited, no, no, it's definitely not being played there. Um, it's way too expensive for constructed, so just a fun casual card. We Dragonauts is a reprint. This is a 1-3 for red-white and one generic fairy wizard on the common. It has flying. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus two, plus oh until end of turn. That is stackable. This is a great card. Uncommon, flyers, you know, you're casting spells. You know, is it looking more and more popular as far as, uh, you know, stacking up 50 50 creature, creature versus spell versus kind of like a, a 60 40 or a 70 30 type of mix. Um, but these types of creatures, if you can get multiple of these, like that's a, that's going to be a strategy. And I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm actually kind of leaning more away from the Demir side and really kind of going all in on the surveil and using surveil blue inside of my is it deck. Um, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. We'll see as we get more cards released, but again, really, really good uncommon. Uh, next up, we've got uh, World, Soar, World, uh, World Soul Colossus. That is a tongue twister. X green white for an elemental with Convoke, and then it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. That's that's a thing. It doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have... Um, uh, what you call it? It doesn't have uh, trample or any meaningful effects or abilities that allow it to get through in combat. Um, but giving it trample wouldn't probably isn't a difficult task. You know, it's in Silencia color, color, so it's it's possible. Um, Irta, the silencer is next. It's two generic blue black for a three five vampire assassin at rare. Uh, it can't be blocked. Uh, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you exile a creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more cards with hit counters on them. And then afterwards, you shuffle her into your library. Great card, except for the very last bit. But like, I understand why the last bit's in there, because it keeps the um, card from going way out of control, right? Um, the removal is great you know getting rid of their best thing if you happen to you know in sealed you're gonna f i think in sealed and, and draft and limited particular to at a giant you're gonna be able to um uh possibly get to her quicker because obviously it's a smaller deck 40 uh it's in black and blue so it's got you know the surveillability um so we'll see um, but I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm, it's one of those uh, rares that I'm, I kind of get excited for and just build a crappy deck around and just take it to Friday, my, Friday Night Magic to have some fun. Uh, Unmourned Ego is next. This is black, blue, one generic for a uh, rare sorcery. You choose, an, uh, you choose a name of a card, search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for up to four cards with that name, exile them, that player shuffles their library, then draws cards for each card exiled that way. Uh, from their hand, that is. Uh, key thing to notice here is lands are not named, right? So it doesn't say choose a non-land card, right? It says ch choose a named card, right? So you name the card. You can say forest and go search for four forests and pull them out of their deck. Um, 
Definitely a sideboard card. Modern playable for sure because of that alone. Drawing cards because the ones that were exiled out of their hand, that's that's fine. You're not really too worried about that. The op, the the chances in a in a constructed um, uh, f- format where you're actually naming the card out of their uh, uh, out of their hand is irrelevant because you're playing this out of your sideboard. So definitely worth a look uh, going forward. So the uh, we got a couple more cards here. We have last up. Uh, let's see. Your Undercity Uprising is two generic, one black, one green. It's a two-two common fungus zombie. It uh, and let's see your creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Um, death touch is just added value, right? It's gonna kill anything that you put on it, so you're not really looking to. Uh, save this creature long term it's really more of a four mana removal spell and if you can keep it great if not then it's it's really not uh it's really not that big of a deal um obviously if you play it on turn four you're probably going to get maybe one or two uh plus one plus one counters if you play it late game um that's probably where you're going to be able to save the creature and possibly get rid of their best thing and then turn around win the game right there um so we'll see uh let's see here next up was we've got corpse troll uh oh excuse me we do not have corpse troll where oh i uh yeah i totally did that backwards uh so we just read uh rizam lurcher i apologize the uh middle card there is under city uprising um so let's see here uh so we just okay so the <clears throat> Excuse me. So the lurcher is two two for black uh, black green two generic um, fungus zombie, and when it enters the battlefield, it gets a number of plus one plus one counters equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So that one that was a solid card. Um, for I mean, obviously you're going to want to play it later, <clears throat> but the underwhelming uprising or excuse me, undercity uprising creatures you control get death touch until end of turn and then you can basically fight a creature that's a great removal spell um it's at sorcery speed so it's not going to be as powerful as most but um the death touch is definitely worth it but the lurcher on the other hand going back to the lurcher um you know playing one or two of these isn't bad um just because undergrowth is, is such a great ability for the golgari Playing cards into the graveyard, uh, sacrificing things like that, um, having having a sack outlet is definitely worth your while. So if you've got one of those, um, it can all go into your strategy, and this thing can get huge. Uh, again, doesn't have trample or anything like that, so just be cautious. Um, let's see here. Next up, we got K uh, Corpse Troll. Oh my God, they brought a Cave Troll. Uh, no, it's Corpse Troll. It's one black green for a troll with trample at the beginning of your upkeep exile a creature card from your graveyard if you do put a plus one plus one counter on corpse troll if you can't sacrifice him Whew, that's that's rough right so um definitely gonna be dropping creatures into your graveyard but luckily he has an ability for that so black green discard creature card put a plus one plus one counter on cave troll so this thing can get out of control pretty quick. I mean, if you don't have any, um, if you don't have any creatures in your graveyard, obviously you're in a tough situation uh, early on. But if you can f- kind of fill your graveyard up with two or three, and then use this as kind of like a finisher, so this is almost more like a splash card, really. Um, because like w- like Silencia really doesn't care too much about creatures in the graveyard. Um, this is almost kind of like the like the anti. Golgari card, right? Like, because most of them want creatures in your graveyard. This one gets rid of creatures in your graveyard. Although it does have the ability to put creatures in the graveyard, but on the other hand, you're exiling them um, at the beginning of your upkeep. So uh, it's kind of a catch twenty two. I would almost splash black for this and play in uh, Silencia for sure. Um, or you could splash green and and play it in um, uh, Demir. So I don't know if I would really play that in Golgari. That's that's a rough card, right? Especially if you're in a Graveyard Matters um, type of thing. So who knows, right? <clears throat> who knows? Uh, and then our last card here is our split card. Discover uh, Dispersal is next. Discovery is going to be the card you play majority of the time. Uh, one generic black blue hybrid mana surveil to then draw a card at sorcery speed uncommon um 
being able to surveil first and then draw your card is much better than drawing than surveilling. Um, in this format, surveilling is going to be extremely important. So the surveil two for two mana, the cantrip is is extremely powerful. Um, and the fact that this can go into like a Golgari deck or a Rakdos deck or a mono black deck, like the fact that you don't have to have blue mana to draw cards without taking damage is phenomenal. Uh, so you'll be playing Discovery more often than not. Dispersal, on the other hand, is three generic, one blue, one black, instant speed. Uh, each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand, then discard a card. Um, the only time you'll probably play this is if you draw this super late game and you're kind of just trying to get something out of the way or like their big thing out of the way. Otherwise, you'll you'll just be discovering the whole time. So, um, so yeah, like a card and a half there. Not too not too shabby. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you get subscribed. We really do appreciate it. Leave a comment below about what colors and uh, guilds you're looking forward to playing at your pre-release. It's coming up very very quickly. Uh, make sure you tune in on Monday uh, for the Mana Drain podcast on twitch.tv slash 72 DPI online. And then we also have our ball and chain podcast every Wednesday on that same channel, twitch.tv slash 72 DPI online. Really do appreciate the love. Thanks for all the support. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for more spoilers and preview videos. Thanks for watching and you guys have a great evening.